Good afternoon. Uh, almost every summer at the uh, Mises University, uh, one stu some students will come up and say, well, when did you get started into libertarianism? And how did the Mises Institute get uh, to Auburn? But uh, about four or five years ago, a student came up with a look. He wanted to know the answer to those questions. But he brought me this book, The Failure of the uh, New Economics by Henry Hasley. And he uh, showed me the, the inside inscription. And he bought this for about $2. And he said, I was really sh shocked that uh, Henry Hasley gave this to you in 1959. It says to John Denson, with warmest regards, Henry Hasley, May 1959. I said, well, I really do appreciate you bringing me this book, but uh, that John Denson is not me. <laughs> and uh, I said, however, uh, I met John Denson, uh, that John Denson in 1960. He's a cousin of mine that uh, uh, he had been the editor of Newsweek in 1959. And Henry Hazlitt was one of the columnists. And I think Walter Lippmann was the other. So. Uh, in 1960, I was in graduate law school at NYU, and that was the year of the presidential election, Nixon and Kennedy, and a lot of speakers came, and it was pretty exciting. And I had two other cousins from Birmingham that were practicing law in New York, too. And one of them, Nell, uh, had uh, known John Denson uh, when they were both living in Washington. And she called me and said, uh, uh, look, uh, John Denson is leaving Newsweek, and he's coming to New York to be editor of the New York Herald Tribune newspaper. And uh, would you like to meet him? I said, well, absolutely. And uh, so after the election uh, was over, he came to uh, New York and I uh, met him in a, a luncheon. And uh, it was a working luncheon for him. And we sat in a booth and these various reporters would come in and he would have conversations with him. So the luncheon lasted for about uh, two and a half hours. But anyway... Uh, at the end, uh, we talked about the election. I said, I'm really worried about uh, the election. I said, uh, one of the speakers that came to the campus to, uh, to uh, support Kennedy was John Kenneth Galbraith. And he said, uh, you know, there's still some Neanderthals that believe in a balanced budget. And everybody started laughing. And I thought, hmm, must be a, I must be a Neanderthal. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, we don't need to worry about deficit spending. We owe it to ourselves. I mean, how does that look today with China and Japan on here? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I said, uh, I really don't feel like I, I took economics in college, but I don't know really how to respond to all that. And he said, look, I've got a good friend named Henry Hazlitt that wrote a column for me at Newsweek. And uh, he wrote one of the best books you'll ever read. And so he recommended I, I read Economics in One Lesson. So that was 58 years ago that I started becoming a libertarian. And uh, so when I came back uh, to uh, uh, Opelika to practice law, uh, one of my theories on uh, getting involved, because I was really worried about things, was to break the power of the Democrat Party uh, on the South. And there was a guy named John Grenier that was Goldwater's Southern strategist. And he started working in 1962 to build a Republican Party. So I'm went to a Republican meeting and got elected to county chairman on a two to one vote. Uh, one, one, one person nominated me and the other in second and we voted and I voted against me. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, I got real active in the Republican party. And uh, uh, oddly enough, uh, somebody came up to me and said, uh, you know, you need to read a book. You, you sound like a character in a book I know. And I said, what is it? He said, Atlas Shrug. And uh, he loaned me this book. I said, well, that's over a thousand pages. I, I can't read that. But uh, anyway, I got into that book and uh, it really had an effect on me. You know, a novel can really sort of get inside you and see how things work. But uh, Ayn Rand's organization, Objectivists, were recommending two uh, economists, Henry Hazlitt and Ludwig von Mises. So that's how I came to know about Ludwig von Mises. So immediately I started reading socialism and eventually omnipotent government and, and kept on uh, going that way. But I uh, also uh, discovered other libertarian book, uh, 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 think tanks like Fee and uh, Freedom School in Colorado. 
in uh, Lafave. We have all of his stuff now, I think. We have all his books in our library. <clears throat> um, and I, I don't know which one of those organizations, but I also heard a, an audio, had an audio tape uh, of Percy Greaves uh, talking about Pearl Harbor. And uh, he had been employed by the Republicans to uh, do the research for the hearings in 1945 and 46. And I mean, that really blew my mind. I mean, he said Roosevelt knew there was going to be an attack. He baited the Japanese into it and uh, then didn't tell the commanders so it would be a surprise attack to get America into the war. And I said, gosh, government is lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got real interested in uh, uh, revisionist history and got into World War I a lot. So great historians of Harry Elmer Barnes and uh, Charles Tansel and Charles Beard did a magnificent job on World War I. Uh, but anyway, uh, I got elected as an alternate delegate to the Republican Convention in 68. And our delegation was divided between Nixon and Reagan. And uh, finally, everybody went with Nixon. And then I was a delegate for the 72 convention. And uh, as you may recall, I think Ron Paul probably recalls this, that in 71, Nixon put on wage and price controls, severed gold from the dollar, and announced he was a Keynesian. So I, I refused to vote for him as a delegate and refused to support him. And I, saw, I just uh, I decided to give up on the Republicans. And oddly enough, John Hospice, who was running for the Libertarian as a uh, uh, candidate for the Libertarian Party for president, was here in Auburn in 72 and had a friend called uh, uh, Dr. Andelson in the philosophy department. So he invited me to have lunch with John Hospice. So uh, that was my first uh, connection to the Libertarian Party. So I became a delegate uh, in 1976. But going back a little bit, uh, for about four years, I wrote a, an article for the local paper uh, called A Libertarian Viewpoint by John Galt. So, there's, <laughs> so that, uh, not, not to be confused with John Galt and Atlas Shrug, I spelled it J-O-N-G-A-U-L-T. Uh, but it was, once I wrote about Pearl Harbor as John Galt, you thought I dropped a bomb. I mean, people just got so upset about hearing that. But anyway, I went to the 76 Libertarian Convention as a delegate, and I think that's probably where I met Jewel Herbert. I think Jewel was always involved in libertarian things at that time. And that's when I first met Mary Rothbard. And uh, he, was, uh, he presented the uh, uh, um, platform for the Libertarian Party with a non-interventionist foreign policy and free market, all the things that I, I wanted for the Republicans and didn't get. And I was also a delegate to the next, next convention, 70. Uh, in 1980. But uh, the thing that uh, <clears throat> that I got interested in was the creation of the Cato Institute, and Murray Rothbard was one of the founders, as uh, I think Ed Crane and uh, Charles Cope, and they were going to put on uh, 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 seminars. So I signed up for a seminar in, uh, I think it was 1979. I was asking Roger Garrison. He was there, and I can't remember what year it was. It was in uh, uh, at Dartmouth College, a whole week. And uh, one of the uh, things that I liked was uh, Ralph Rako was speaking on World War I, and I was into all of that, so I uh, got to speak a lot to Ralph Rako. But I uh, um, met the person that was in charge of that Cato conference named Marsha Friedman and told her about my background and what I was trying to do and how disappointed I was in the political situation, and I thought they were doing the right thing, and I would love to do something like that at Auburn. And um, uh, in 1980, uh, uh, Governor uh, Bob James that I knew appointed me to the uh, Board of Trustees at Auburn. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know if uh, Marshall Friedman found that out or whether I was already a trustee in 1980. But um, uh, the next thing that happened, I got a, a phone call in 1982 from a guy I'd never heard of before named Lou Rock. And uh, he said uh, uh, he would like to talk, come over and talk to me about uh, the creating the Ludwig von Mises Institute and having it connected to Auburn University because I was a trustee. And I mean, I, I said, prayers do get answered. You know, I said, wow, because I didn't know how to run a, uh, an, an institute. And uh, so anyway, Lou came over and uh, told me part of that background. And he's just uh, told you. But one of the things he said, I don't think you mentioned here that impressed me at that time was that he said when he asked Mrs. Mises for her support, uh, she said, uh, well, I will, if you will commit to me 
that you will devote the rest of your life to promoting my husband's ideas. And he committed. And I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, that's quite a commitment to make. There's no structure in place, and he's, he's committed to this. And, of course, he told me about Murray Rothbard and Ron Paul were going to help. And uh, I said, whatever it takes, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I want to uh, uh, get uh, on campus uh, with the facilities. So Lou drew up a contract that he and I reviewed where the Institute would uh, get facilities uh, in the academic buildings and pay a uh, certain percentage of the uh, income to the university uh, limited to the economics department. So it sort of recycled. So uh, we met, I took him to meet uh, President uh, Winford Bailey back then, a very, very good president. And Lou presented that and I endorsed it. And the president said he would support that. But he wanted me to present it uh, to the Board of Trustees. So I presented it, and one of the <clears throat> one of the um, old time members there, Red Bamberg, was big in agriculture and and uh, so forth. And he said, "What are y'all going to be teaching over there?" And I said, "Free market economics." He said, "Well, I like free market economics, but don't mess with my government subsidies." <laughs> so uh, I told him we'd take a note about that, and I pretended you don't know, write that down, uh, but. Uh, Anyway, they, uh, uh, Dr. Bailey created a little office at Thatch Hall, and there were, there were just three employees. And guess who they were? Lou, his wife, Marty, and Pat. They were there then, they're there today, all the way through, those three. And uh, then we graduated to a little building uh, over in, uh, near the stadium, Petrie Hall. And I've got a picture here. I showed Ron. He came to that... Uh, that place and brought us some books. We didn't have any books in our bookshelves. There's a picture of me meeting with Ron in, I don't know, 84 or something like that. Uh, and uh, brought us a federal code. And uh, we didn't have many books then, so we were, I think we still got those books. We still have them. Uh, but uh, anyway, we had a new president, uh, Jim Martin, came along. He was very sympathetic to what we were doing. He said, look, uh, I'd like for y'all to have a, a better place uh, we're going to build a new business school, and uh, I'm, uh, you meet with the architect and tell uh, him what you need. And so I did, and uh, the design was that as you went in the front door of the of the uh, in, uh, the business school, uh, <clears throat> there was the Mises Institute, uh, the reception, uh, office for Lou, conference room. We had access to the uh, 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 classrooms. And uh, as I learned, uh, as being a trust advocate, I guess 19 years, there was, uh, I learned a little bit about uh, academic politics and uh, <laughs> how bad that can be. And so I advised Lou, I said, Lou, I hate for you to depend on Auburn all the time. Why don't you uh, uh, get your own place? And uh, so Lou uh, found this spot and built uh, the, the building, which is uh, much smaller than it is. <laughs> This is a massive improvement. But uh, that in a short span of uh, my 15 minutes, that's how I got into libertarianism 58 years ago and how the Mises Institute came uh, to be at Auburn. Thank you very much.